Good afternoon, folks. We're going to uh, get started. Uh, first, uh, however, I want to thank our partners for uh, being here. I also want to thank you all for, for being here. Getting the word out on this uh, important issue, uh, I believe, is going to help us make a positive impact in the safety of our community. So uh, to the US, uh, acting U.S. Attorney, uh, Matt Kirch, thank you very much for, for being here. Uh, David Booth uh, from the ATF. Also, Mike Mills from uh, Metro Denver Crime Stoppers. Uh, thank you, we couldn't do this without you. And uh, somebody who really has demonstrated uh, his unwavering support for our community, keeping our community safe, uh, being focused on uh, victims, being focused on preventing crime is the mayor of Denver, Mayor Michael Hancock, who will come up and have some brief remarks. Thank you all for, for being here. And I want to start by thanking our chief, uh, Chief Paul Pazin, for his leadership and for bringing together key stakeholders to collaborate on how we keep our neighborhoods safe. I also want to thank ATF and the U.S. Attorney's Office and the District Attorney's Office for, for being here and being our partners in this uh, critical effort. Uh, just this week, uh, during my State of City address, I acknowledged the continuing challenge of the post-pandemic rise in violent crime in Denver. And the, the real reality is that we were seeing a, violent, a rise in violent crime before the pandemic, and the pandemic exacerbated uh, what we were seeing and continue to see even today. I also said we must find a balance. We must find a balance between needed reforms and maintaining public safety for all our residents because one cannot and should not come at the expense of the other. The illegal, the illegal use uh, and, and possession of firearms threatens that balance, exposes flaws in our justice system, and exacerbates an already challenging time for our law enforcement officers and, of course, the tenuous ride and strive toward safety for everyone in our community. We know uh, it's gonna take a coordinated, multi-agency approach to get these, these guns and the felons who use them to reoffend off our streets. We're no strangers to working with our federal partners to solve crime in Denver, Colorado, uh, to help stop the scourge or whatever we're trying to stop. They have been em enormously helpful. So as a community, we cannot and we will not tolerate it, uh, tolerate the prohibited use of guns by convicted violent felons in our city. This initiative that the chief will be announcing in just a moment um, are aimed at the greatest consequences of the most serious of those offenders. And so I'm proud to be here to stand with our police chief and with our federal partners. And I applaud the Denver Police Department for leading the nation in reforms and working to expand the alternative police response options uh, where we can in our city. Um, Chief Pazin has been a leader and recognized national leader on these efforts as well as creative, innovative solutions and steps toward um, preventing gun violence and uh, preventing those guns from getting into the hands of violent offenders um, and uh, making sure we bring to bear the full weight of the justice system to deal with it. And so thank you, Chief, for having me, and I look forward to joining everyone and hearing what this new initiative is about. So uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, it's no secret that violent crime is on the rise. Uh, Gun-related crime is on the rise in our city. We cannot become numb to this gun violence. We cannot normalize this gun violence. And the status quo is not acceptable. And that is why we are announcing this enhanced partnership in order to address individuals who are committing these violent acts in our community. We are here to announce the creation of a new investigative team that includes the ATF and a Denver police officer. This enhanced partnership will focus on violent felons who carry firearms. These are the individuals who are the most likely contributors to violence in our city. We also want to put violent felons on notice if you choose to illegal possess or use a firearm in Denver, we will do everything within our authority to ensure you face the greatest penalties. The new investigative team will work together. They'll respond to investigations in progress and assist our officers on scene to gather that evidence 
and ensure that the reporting mechanism is as solid as possible. Uh, these cases will be reviewed for possession of a weapon by a previous offender, or what we, we refer to as PALPOs, uh, for prosecution either by the Denver District Attorney's Office or the United States, uh, uh, just, excuse me, the United States Attorney's Office for the District of Colorado. Prioritizing uh, these cases for consideration of filing on the most serious available charges based on the connections to the shootings, whether the crime occurred uh, in one of our hotspots, one of our five crime hotspots, or the likelihood of future violent activity. These efforts will complement the courageous ongoing work of our officers who are recovering illegal guns and making these types of arrests. So to date, the Denver Police Department and our officers have recovered 1,170 firearms this year. I repeat, 1,170 firearms have been taken uh, off the streets in Denver this year. What does that mean? That's 26% increase over the three-year baseline. Not uh, 2021 versus a, a pandemic year, but against the three-year baseline, a 26% increase in recovering these weapons that are causing the most harm to our community. Our officers have also, to date, made 415 arrests for pro prohibited po possession of firearms, these PALPO arrests, this year alone. What does that mean? That's a 48% increase over the three-year baseline. Uh, we cannot accept the status quo. We have to innovate. We have to look for solutions in order to keep our community safe. The Metro Denver Crime Stoppers, the ATF, and the Denver Police Department are also partnering on billboards. The sign that you see to my right will be uh, prominently posted on billboards in our five hotspots. It is critical that we get our community support, with that we get tips from the community to help us address illegal gun activity, to address all crime activity. And so we would encourage folks to utilize uh, the ATF tip line, as well as the very effective uh, Crime Stoppers tip line to report this type of activity. That said, I'd like to uh, introduce a, a critical partner in this, uh, special agent in charge of the Denver ATF office, uh, David Booth. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm David Booth. I'm the ATF agent who's the uh, special agent in charge for the ATF's Denver Field Division. We have a long-standing relationship with the Denver Police Department, as well as many other organizations in the, in the region, including Crime Stoppers. Our partnership has included uh, such successes like NIBIN, the National Integrated Ballistic Information Network, or RAVEN, which is the Regional Anti-Violence Enforcement Network. These programs would not be the successes they are without the support of the United States Attorney's Office, as well as the Denver District Attorney's Office. Um, today, I'm proud to join our partners to announce yet another element of this partnership, which Chief Pazin just spoke about. And what I, the message I'd like to pass on to, to Denver is that Folks, this is your community, this is your police department, this is your ATF, and we're going to use everything we can at our disposal to remove these violent people from our community. And with that, I'd like to turn it over to Acting United States Attorney Matt Kirsch. Thanks, David. My name is Matt Kirsch. I am the Acting U.S. Attorney for the District of Colorado. Uh, I want to tell you all a little bit more about uh, the partnership that everybody's been talking about today. This is really the next evolution of a targeted violent crime strategy that we've already been using in Denver and the surrounding area, and that has in fact been adopted as a nationwide model as a part of the Department of Justice's Project Safe Neighborhoods program. This strategy is not based on uh, a sort of traditional model of simply increasing the number of federal prosecutions that we might bring. Instead, this strategy focuses federal law enforcement resources to bring federal charges against the most dangerous criminals in Denver who are operating in the most dangerous places in Denver. 
The strategy uses data from police reports, from gunshot location technologies, from the NIBIN technology that David Booth just referred to, to focus law enforcement efforts on criminals who are most likely to be possessing and using guns. What the new effort today adds into that mix is data about where the most violent crimes are occurring, um, as well as other on-the-ground intelligence from DPD officers and the additional investigative efforts to develop potential federal cases that you heard Chief Pazin describe. All of that is gonna further focus law enforcement's efforts on the most dangerous people, those people who are using guns to commit crimes. The file review that you heard Chief Pazin described is gonna occur for every felon arrested with a gun in Denver. An attorney from my office is gonna do that in conjunction with an attorney from the Denver District Attorney's Office. As a result of that review, we're gonna determine which office can bring charges that will best incapacitate the people who've been arrested with guns. And when federal charges are the most likely to accomplish that goal, we are not going to hesitate to vigorously pursue those charges. Let me give you just one example of the kind of case in which this strategy has worked in the past. My office recently prosecuted a person named Ryan Littlejohn Connor. Mr. Littlejohn Connor was a leader in the uh, Atre Crips gang here in Denver. And um, he ran out into a parking lot uh, and fired 12 shots at two people who he was chasing away in the middle of this crowded parking lot. He hit one of the people who he was actually shooting at in the back of the head, although did not kill him. And one of the other shots that he fired went into the middle of one of the nearby apartments. It went into the bathroom where the occupants, the apartment's occupant happened to be uh, sleeping in, in the bed right next to that bathroom. Um, through a combination of evidence, including video surveillance and shell casings that were recovered by DPD there at the scene, uh, we were able to prosecute and convict Mr. Little John Connor for being a felon in possession of ammunition, one of the federal charges that we expect to be using as a part of this initiative. And just last month, he was sentenced to serve 84 months in the Federal Bureau of Prisons. So I'm really pleased on behalf of the U.S. Attorney's Office to be able to continue to work with the Denver Police Department and the ATF and all of our other federal and state uh, law enforcement partners to continue this effort of identifying and prosecuting the most violent people in Denver that we can. Thanks. Again, I want to thank each of you for being here, for sharing this message. We want these uh, violent felons to know exactly what this partnership is all about and that we are working together with the Denver District Attorney's Office, the ATF, the U.S. Attorney's Office, and Crime Stoppers in order to hold them accountable. Uh, thank you for being here. We can open it up for a few questions. So uh, a little bit about the, uh, the, the team. So we have uh, identified uh, an ATF agent that uh, will be partnered with a Denver police officer. They've been working together for about three weeks now. They've gotten additional training uh, on these uh, types of issues and uh, they will respond. If we have a, uh, a shooting that occurs within our city, uh, patrol officers will, will respond to that as well as our uh, crime gun response team these two officers, an ATF agent and a police officer, to help facilitate that investigation, right? We don't want to have the worst of the worst. This, could be, this person could be identified as the worst uh, uh, individual with a high propensity for violence. We want to make sure that we gather all of the evidence appropriate, that the interview uh, takes place, so we have those options of filing this either in the Denver District Attorney's Office or the U.S. Attorney's Office, again, based on uh, the, the likelihood of future criminal activity and or uh, in our five hotspots. So this enhanced partnership is actually uh, providing this team as well as providing additional training. Uh, this team is uh, going out to each one of the districts to the roll calls, making sure that all of our officers uh, know and understand what it takes in order to have successful prosecution further down the road. It, uh, it's a, a, a 
uh, an officer who's got a lot of experience worked on a uh, high profile case with uh, the a a ATF uh, recently, has some great experience. The ATF agent has some great experience as well. Uh, she adds, our, our officer adds a, a lot of value uh, to this and we're very proud that there was a selection process and uh, glad to have her on the team. Correct. That's part, that's, that's the, the uh, crime gun response team. We're partnering these folks together and they will physically respond to these sh uh, shooting calls and assist. And the one team. Uh, both. And, and you heard uh, Acting U.S. Attorney Kirsch talk about it. The worst of the worst, right? We want to make sure that uh, these violent felons, these, these folks that are prohibited from possessing firearms that are uh, creating the most harm in our community, that they're held accountable. And we want to make sure that we have those options in order to, to do this. This gives us the greatest opportunity for success right at the beginning of that call. And this enhanced partnership with the DA's office, U.S. Attorney's ATF, and then again, uh, the community. The community lets us know what's going on. We would encourage folks to report illegal gun uh, activity in, in all crimes through the ATF tip line and through our partners at Metro Denver Crime Stoppers as well. So, so uh, ATF, uh, we have this great partnership uh, with Raven, as, as uh, um, David spoke of here, with the U.S. Attorney's Office, reviewing these cases for uh, possible federal charges on it. This uh, enhances that partnership. This puts that additional resource on scene at the time uh, of the shooting that gives us the greatest opportunity for success. Even uh, in the Denver District Attorney's Office, this gives us uh, an opportunity to have stronger cases uh, locally if it meets the criteria that Matt discussed, right? The worst of the worst. That's what uh, we need to get off the streets. Uh, violent felons that are indiscriminately pulling triggers and creating great harm within our community. We need to put them on notice that that is not going to be tolerated, that this community will not stand for that, and we are going to work collaboratively in order to address these individuals. So uh, there, uh, it, we want to get the worst of the worst uh, off the street. Uh, if that's somebody that's in the hot spot, that uh, is great. If it's somebody that we think has high propensity for violence in the future, then we're going to, again, triage this in conjunction with the district attorney's office and the U.S. attorney's office. So, Connor in the back. So, uh, excellent question, and it is uh, something that we had discussions about. Uh, and, and I'm going to take a step back here for a second, right? Uh, you know, you heard uh, the mayor uh, announce uh, the five hotspots in Denver, five locations, relatively small geographic, make up 1.56% per per of our land mass that count for 49% of our shootings and 26% of our homicides, right? The, uh, the scholars, the academics, the researchers, they talk about hot spots and hot people. I don't know if this is uh, something that you're familiar with. Uh, this gives us an opportunity to focus on those hot people, the worst of the worst, and figuring out where the most appropriate filing will take place. We did have the discussions on place-based, and uh, we, we certainly are, will review everything to make sure that we're on solid legal ground. That's exactly why we're creating this uh, crime gun, gun response team, so that way every I is dotted, every T is crossed right from the beginning. So uh, I don't want to uh, get too far into the weeds uh, on this, but uh, backgrounds, uh, convic convictions have a big part of that uh, as well. Julia. Typically, uh, DOJ has a policy that prohibits prosecution for the same conduct if, uh, if a person has already been prosecuted in state court. Um, but there are cases, there are inappropriate cases, uh, we can seek a waiver of that policy. Um, there are some cases that are going to arise as a result of this initiative that the Denver DA's office is simply gonna be better at prosecuting. The, if, it's, if a murder happens and is provable, the Denver DA's office is going to be better at, they have, we don't even have a federal murder statute unless it occurs right against a federal employee or on federal land. 
So that case is going to go to the Denver DA's office. There may be instances where some portion of the case might fit better in state court and some portion in the case might fit better in federal court. We'll just have to make that determination on a case-by-case -case basis. In general, we have to consider, uh, we have to look at what the federal law enforcement interest is and whether or not it has been appropriately vindicated by the state prosecution. If it hasn't, then that's when, that was what would cause us to seek a waiver. I'm, uh, I am aware of a few other cities where the ATF works very closely with um, a local police department in order to try to develop cases like this. I'm not saying that it ha hasn't happened in other places, but I'm not aware of other locations where there is a response team that involves the ATF and a local police department like you've heard about today. We're going to measure it by figuring out whether or not we can successfully prosecute people who have been responsible for violent crimes in Denver. If we, if, if we can do that, then we'll consider it a success. No, like I said, we're, I, I think it's a mistake to try to focus on the number of prosecutions as opposed to focusing on the quality of the prosecutions. That's what this initiative is about. So uh, there's a lot of nuance in, in what we were talking about today, right? When we're explaining uh, what this team's doing, how it's responding, the difference between the DA cases and the difference between the U.S. Attorney uh, Office cases, this gives us, as uh, I believe Matt said, this is the next evolution. This gives us the greatest opportunity uh, for success going further upstream holding people accountable before they commit these uh, violent acts, uh, these uh, individuals that are prohibited from owning or possessing firearms, holding them accountable through uh, both the, the Denver District Attorney's Office and the U.S. Uh, Attorney's Office. Uh, we believe that this will help us reduce the uh, shootings, reduce the homicides that have occurred within our city, and help us uh, keep our city safe. And, and that's what we're focused on here. The next evolution, doing uh, something that's innovative, not accepting the status quo, not uh, becoming numb or tolerating violence within our community. And we're very excited that uh, we have this type of partnership to give us uh, the opportunity to keep our city safe. And part of it is the messaging. We want these violent felons to know that this team is working together to hold them accountable. So thank you. So um, this is this, this will be the last question. I'm I'm sorry. I'm uh, trying to uh, be respectful of our partners' times. Uh, so uh, we are we analyze each one of these cases. Uh, major crimes does deep dives. Uh, we look at solvability. We look at cases that are solved and look for those underlying causal factors. What we are seeing this year that is unique to years past is uh, of the, the, the five most recent homicides, four of which there was a nexus to narcotics, dealing, uh, you know, some sort of transaction there. Uh, the previous 10, five or six of those, there was a direct nexus to narcotics. Typically, 2020, for example, the number one causal factor was some sort of dispute, some sort of disagreement that escalated into a shooting. This year, 2021, we're seeing an increase with that uh, narcotics nexus. So uh, we're focused on that. Uh, we are aware of it. We've made some changes uh, to some of the staffing uh, down in uh, these areas, and we'll continue to evaluate it. Uh, but we also think that this initiative, uh, partnering together with the ATF, uh, partnering together with both the district attorney's office and the U.S. attorney's office to hold the worst of the worst accountable will help us start to mitigate uh, this violence and, and uh, start to reduce the violence in our city in, in all areas, the five hotspots as well as uh, anywhere that this takes place. So thank you all again uh, for spreading the, the word uh, on this very important initiative. We appreciate it.